again it's mr k in the garage and today before we get started you know i usually say a little something at the beginning before i get into the you know objectives and standards and all that sort of stuff but this is going to help us out so we're just going to jump right into the business part of it here our standard for the day is to organize and develop artistic ideas and work and our objective and we need to have this one first so we can talk about it a little bit Create an expressive shadow drawing using the positive and negative shapes of shadows and coloring it in with either warm or cool colors. Hmm. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, what are we talking about? Well, let's start with what we're going to make. We're going to make what's called an expressive shadow drawing, which is pretty much exactly what you would think it is. You're going to draw shadows. We're going to take a thing of some sort, and we'll talk about what things we can use for this. You're going to take something and take it outside, or use a lamp. You could use a lamp too. You don't have to be outside during the daytime. If you want to do this at night with a lamp shining on something, that's totally cool. And you're going to draw the shadows. You're going to trace wherever you see the shadows, and the shadows are going to be right on top of your paper. I'm going to go outside in a moment and show you how this works, but let's figure out the rest of this. So, you're going to find these shapes. Now, I mentioned positive and negative shapes, and this is the first of our vocabulary words we're going to talk about. Positive shapes are things that fill in, well, like for instance, if I have my hand here, my hand is the positive shape. There's something there. But if we're talking about a negative shape, negative shapes would be the space in between my fingers, the space in between the legs on a chair. Um, a vase of some sort. The vase itself, if you could you know, hit the side of it, that's the positive. The negative would be the inside of the vase. So anything like that where the, the actual solid shape is, that's going to be your positive. In this case, the shadows are going to be your positive. The negative shape is going to be where the sunshine hits your paper. So we're going to trace around the edge of where those positive and negative shapes are. And I'll show you how that works outside too. So, before we go out there, we need some stuff to draw. We'll talk about the expressive part when we get to the coloring. That's where the colors come in, and we'll talk about those warm and cool colors in a moment. But for right now, your materials you're going to need. You're going to need paper. Okay, first off, preferably clean, uh, no lines if that's possible. If it's not possible, don't worry about it. The lines look kind of cool anyway, so it's fine. If you have a pencil or a marker, I'm going to be using a marker for mine. Number one, it shows up on camera a little bit better. Uh, but you could you know, do it with pencil to start with. It's going to look better if you use a marker at the end. That's okay, too. If you only have crayons or colored pencils, that's totally fine. Don't worry if you don't have a dark black marker. Um, you're going to color in your drawing, and you're going to need crayons or colored pencils or markers or something like that, whatever you have. You could use paint too if you really want to. And like I said, you're gonna need some objects. Now, you could get a favorite toy or you know, stuffed animal or a doll or a truck or whatever you have. Um, boots, some, I've seen rain boots used for this before. Ms. Pado, who, Padow, who is a uh, art teacher also, is who I got this lesson from. And her lesson that she showed me her son had like a toy airplane. He's a lot, he's like, you know, five or six or something. He's got a toy airplane and some rain boots and like a, a kind of a monstery doll thing. And so he had a whole bunch of things that he put around the paper and traced around their shadow. I'm gonna, I, my kids are almost in high school. I don't have too many stuffed animals and toys like that. So I'm gonna get something for me. You could just get one object and move it around however you wanna do it. I'm gonna go outside now and show you what I'm gonna do with this. All right, so I have my work area outside here and I have my paper and I have my marker and it's about 9.45 in the morning. So the sun is coming in at this kind of an angle right here. So I'm gonna get a lot of shadows. You see my hand here. They're gonna be very long coming in this way. So if you change up the time of day, it's gonna look really cool. What I have for my object is my stool here. Now you could have a bunch of different objects and do them all at the same time. You don't have to wait for different times of day. You could just move this one object around and do it a bunch of different times. 
I'm going to try different times of day and see what happens. So I'm going to set this one up over here. Oh, there we go. Get some nice shapes going on. I'm going to put my paper down. Where do I see a nice... There we go. And you probably don't want to do a stool. You can do all sorts of different things like we talked about. But I'm going to go ahead and trace right around the outside. I'm not going to color it in yet. You can use a pencil for this. You can use crayon. My marker shows up nicely on here. So Your edges... Oops. Don't move your paper too much. Your edges might be a little fuzzy. That's okay. Just kind of pick an area that looks about right. It kind of curves. Go over here. That's pretty close to where the shadows are. And we'll talk about what all of this makes. We'll make sure it doesn't blow away in the wind, too. It's kind of hard to... I'm, I'm positioning myself for the camera, but you might want to work around the sun so your hand isn't making its own shadow. You can even use your hand, too. You can just put your fingers over the top of it. That'd be kind of cool. Goes all the way off. This goes all the way off over here. And a little line there. And that's it for now. I've got one batch of lines. It's pretty cool all by itself, but I'm going to try this again in a little bit. In a couple hours, we'll see what happens around lunchtime, see what the shadows look like then. All right, so I'm back outside here and it's 10.45 now. And the sun's a little higher up. It's a little easier to uh, see this, the top of it now. You might not be able to see the shadows on the ground very well, but trust me, they're there. And now I have this big round part. I could move the stool. I could put things around. I could do it any different way I want to, but I kind of like the way that this, this, uh, I'm gonna move it a little bit closer so I can get more of that round shape in there with some of these other... Let's move my paper around until I get the right... Let's, move, let's get this big circle going across here. That'll be cool. Right up to the corner of the paper. And if I don't do it perfectly, that's okay too. It's right on that other line there. I can fix that up a little bit later on. I can also just move it around and get some of these other shapes going. I'm going to move so I'm not in the way of my sunlight here. So now I've got some, some interesting shapes happening when I have my, my paper there and see a bunch of different things going on. So maybe I'll, you know, I think, I think I'm good with this one. I could wait for a little while longer. Let me see if I can get the legs in here again. Oh, this is a good shape right here and then I'll be done. I'm just gonna do right up here. Right down here. Ah! hand got bumped by the leg of the chair. It comes in and, and it's right on that other line I already drew. I'm just going to leave it like that. I have to guess at some of these. I can't really see because my hand gets in the way. So my hand's in the way, so I'm going to make a dot and I'm going to aim for the dot. And that line already exists. And you see this little sliver of light right there. Oh, and right here. Oh, and there's a teeny tiny little hole that just barely shows up. Now I've got a lot of stuff. Now, if I get too much more, it's gonna get too cluttered and I won't have anything left to color. So now I've got some interesting shapes happening in here and I can color those in. And let me show you how that's gonna work. 
Okay, so I have my raw drawing here. I've got some spots that when I was out there drawing on the ground, they don't look so great. So I can clean that up. Like I got this little spot here that is a little, I think I hit my hand on that, that part of the stool and it kind of bumped my hand over and made a little edge. That's okay. There's no real right or wrong answer, but I'd like to go in and clean some of these up just a little bit like this here. I'll just make it kind of thick. Whoops, now I just made a mistake and went over there. So I'm gonna make this line a little thicker too, so I can sort of hide that. There's all sorts of little things you can do to fix these things up. If you wanna be a little thinner than that, you can. However you wanna do it, you're the boss of your drawing. I'm not gonna thicken that up too much on the inside because then I'll fill in that little gap. And I like that little gap. I've got a teeny tiny gap here. That's not gonna do much. So I'm just gonna fill that one in. You can change things up a little bit as you go. My line is not that straight. That's okay. Perfect is boring. It's those little bumps and stuff that make it interesting. I'd like to make it a little smoother, but we don't have to get a ruler out or anything like that. So I'll just clean up a few little spaces. I like this one to be nice and thin here, but it could be a little darker. We're basically making our own coloring book right now. Yeah, I want these to touch. We gotta have these areas to fill in. Well, this looks like, I think this looks nicer darkened in. Color right off the edge. I've got a nice tabletop I can, or a not nice tabletop that I can draw on top of. And I don't need to worry about messing anything up. You want to watch out though if you're on your kitchen table or something. You don't want you getting in trouble, all right? Stay out of trouble. Let's bring this down here. Now you might need to do this with crayon. You might want to do it with marker, that's fine. You might want to, if you're using markers to color in with, you might even want to do this afterwards and color on top of it. Well, if you're using watercolors, just leave it with pencil lines or something. Do your watercolor filling in, coloring, then do your markers. I'm gonna use some colored pencils today just because that's what I have available and thought I'd change it up. I usually use crayons for this sort of stuff, so I wanna try something a little different. But yeah, you can clean these lines up if you'd like. And you don't have to. I want to do that though. Well, I've got this little smudge here, so I'm going to make this line really big and get rid of that smudge. There's always a way to fix some of the things you don't want there. Go all the way off the edge. Now I have stuff to. Oh, I got a color. I got to fill in this spot here too. I forgot. I have all this stuff that I can color in. So let's see about this coloring in. Now we talked a little bit about it's an expressive shadow drawing what does expressive mean well expressive is telling us something about you you're expressing an emotion you're expressing an opinion and our colors are going to help us do that so what do we mean by these warm or cool colors well warm colors are like red orange, yellow, those colors are what we would call warm colors. You would think of, when you think of something that's warm, what's warm? The sun, fire, those all have red, orange, and yellow in them. Yeah, yeah, I know. Some of you smarty pants out there might notice that when fire is at its hottest, there's some blue flames you'll see. Okay, whatever, but we don't usually think of that, do we now? Okay, so when you think of something that is cool, you would think of blue, green, and a lot of times you'd think purple. Now here's the tricky part with purple. When you mix red and blue, that's how you get purple. Well, red is a warm color, blue is a cool color. So your purples depend on what type of purple it is. Like this purple here has a lot more red in it. So I might stick that with my warm colors. Now this one has a lot more blue. It actually says blue violet on there. So you might want to put that with your cool colors. Okay, so I have some crayons, or excuse me, some colored pencils here. I'll just show you the ends 
So I've got my warm colors. I've got my cool colors. I've got some purples I could throw in there. And we're going to choose either the warm or the cool and figure out which one we would like to do. Well, how do you choose which one do you want to do? Well, how are you feeling today? Well, I'm out in the garage and it's a hot day and I would really love to look at something nice and cooling and soothing. It reminds me of a swimming pool or the ocean or something like that. So I'm gonna go with some cool colors today. So, so I'm gonna throw this, uh, this kind of bluish violet in with those. And this one says violet. It's kind of reddish, but that's not a problem. You can still throw that in there. So I'm going to throw these colors in to my drawing, and I'm going to color it in. And the way we're going to do this, now it depends on if you're, you, whatever type of thing you're coloring with is fine. But we're going to color in each of these sections. See where these lines are? This, like, I'm going to start with this one for no real reason other than just it's the first thing that I looked at. All the way in here, all the way up here, down into here, around this one section is all going to get this blue violet. Now maybe you've only got three or four colors. That's cool. You could do this with you could do this with three. Try to make it so that like I'm not going to color this part blue violet. I'm not going to color anything that touches it. Maybe if it's on a corner, that's fine. But I'm not going to color in anything. Whoops, I got in there a little bit, but that's okay. I can cover that up easily. I'm going to start at this line and move away from it. Notice how all my lines are kind of going one direction here. And I'm not pushing super hard. It's totally fine. What I can do is, after I finish the whole thing, uh, I can come back in and go the other way. And that kind of smooths everything out. It, notice it's getting darker already. I'll do that with the whole thing here. But that's our goal here. Go ahead and color in each section. I'm going to color all this down here, and I'm going to color all the... I'll do that in a minute. I don't want to take too much time. I'm going to get some smaller sections here. Now, i got a nice bluish purple here. I'm going to put that on top here so I don't forget which one I did. I'm going to do this little section here with my greenish color. And I'm doing... I'm kind of overlapping my black a little bit. It's hard to see that on the black, and that's okay. We want to color in the whole thing. We don't want to get right up to that edge. Maybe I go with a light blue over here. Now, a lot of times kids will ask me in class on a project like this, hey, Mr. K, is it okay if I make like this section here with a blue and a green and a purple all in the same section? Well, you could if you really wanted to, but then you can't tell which color is in which section if you start doing that with all of them. So for something like this, you're probably going to be better off sticking with one color at a time. Okay, and notice I'm halfway back this pencil. I don't have to push hard. I don't have to finish it all in one shot. I can go through here. I'm missing some spots, but that's okay. I'm gonna go back over it a couple times. I'm going through it a little more quickly and covering a little less and the more times I go over it the darker it gets and notice I'm not wearing down the tip of my colored pencil very much. If you push super hard you get it really dark right away but you end up having to sharpen your pencil a lot so if you go a little softer and just go over it a couple times quickly It'll be a little smoother. I missed this edge here. I'm gonna go back over it a few times. I'm gonna hold on to these so I don't forget which one I've already used. And once I've used them all once, I'll go back through. That's not bad. Let's see here. Let's get this kind of this reddish violet here, even though it's got a little red in it, it still qualifies as a cool color. It could look really cool too if you want to break one of your rules and throw an orange in somehow or you know work a, a, a different color in maybe you want to go with 
warm colors on one side and it starts to maneuver over into the, uh, uh, you know, the cool colors into warm colors. I forgot which one I said first. So let's see here. Let's get this kind of darker blue, almost a Dodger blue. So I went one way, now if I go the other way, it kind of smooths out those lines. Now I know how exciting this is to watch me color, but I'll tell you what, let's speed this up just a little bit. happy with how this is coming out. I'm, I'm feeling cooler already. I've got all these negative and positive shapes that I traced around or creating a whole new batch of shapes together. I've got a few left over here. Let me kind of finish this off and talk some of this through with you while I'm wrapping it up. It would give it a whole different meaning if I gave it, if I made this with yellows and oranges and reds and pinks and stuff like that. Pink would be, also would be a, a warm color. Not sure I mentioned that before. Some other colors that you probably are thinking of are what we would call neutral colors. So you've got your, your, your grays. Those are what we would call neutral. Anything in the brown or tan range might be also a, a, a neutral color. This is a ochre yellow. I'd probably put this in with the warm colors, but it's also kind of neutral. So it could go either way. They're, neutral means it's not really warm, it's not really cool. It's just kind of in between black, white, you'd call those neutral also. So I could have put some of those in. That might be kind of cool to have some greens and blues along with some tans and grays. That could be, that would make it look very, very different as well. Some of these I colored them in very heavy. Some of them I left them kind of light. Uh, and in terms of how you go about coloring it, let's see, I'm going to color this part. What would look good around this dark green? I'm thinking, oops, I got to sharpen that one. The, the, the tip of it fell off. How about, well, this one's kind of similar. So my blue violet here, it's this color here. I think that would look good around this little island of green. So I can color this in here. One thing that helps is if you kind of color right around your edges first. That way it gives you a little bit of a border. And then you don't have to worry about going over your oh, color around this guy too, I forgot. That way you don't have to worry about coloring into another area. You don't have to color as far. So like I can start here, or if I, if I end it here, I don't have to get all the way up to that and maybe accidentally spill into my green. I'm not pushing super hard. And I can go back over and smooth it out. I'll go the other direction. And that'll make, you won't see quite so many lines. So if everything's going one way here. That's not bad, but if I go back over it and I don't push hard the other way, I don't have to take forever. I just, now that I've got these kind of borders here, I can I can go a little faster, a little softer, and it's a little easier to color, and I don't have to get too precise and take too long. Also, I'm keeping my paper set in this one spot so you can see it on the camera up there. Feel free to move your paper around to get a better, you know, I don't have to, you don't have to do this to color. You can move your paper. And that's also the nice part about these is you can, after you're done, you can say, well, which way is up? Do I like it this way? Do I like it this way? I'm gonna leave it like this right now because I started doing it this way. Uh, let's see, I feel like there's not enough blue. Let's get this ultramarine blue down here. Oh, you know what? I think that might be the same as this. 
Yeah, that's that one. I don't want to. I don't want it touching that edge right there. How about our, our? This one's called real blue, like the other ones aren't real blue. Um, actually, I think this is the same color that was there. So you know what I could do? There's two things. I could do this lightly and then color over it with something else and blend the two colors together. You can always blend colored pencils. Or I could color this very lightly, and that makes it look like a lighter version of this. You can color this in a little darker. That way they're a little different from each other. I think I'm going to do that. And I got one. Oh, I got two more. I got this one down here and this one right here. So let's see here. Which one do I want? Well, I got a lot of purples and blues. Uh, I like this kind of lightish. What do they call this? Light green. That's because it's a light green. It's kind of... A, light turquoise it looks like to me go around these edges a little bit now when we say it's an expressive color how can colors express something about you well if you're you know people with colors it's basically however they make you feel there's no real right or wrong answer you know, a lot of people associate blue with being sad. Oh, I'm feeling blue today. But, you know, it can also be very happy, like a happy blue, sky blue, you know. So, it's however it makes you feel. There's no one right or wrong answer. Like, and it's not like a math question. If, you know, you don't, I don't feel like two plus two should equal five today. That, that doesn't work. But if you feel like blue is a happy color to you, then that totally works. Red, people associate that with, you know, energy or anger sometimes or you know, intensity, romance, if you think of, of Valentine's Day. But maybe it's just your favorite color. Maybe you just really like it. Blue's my favorite color. So I picked blue. And I picked the cool colors that go along with it. Maybe if you don't go with so many purples and just go with some some of these kind of turquoisey green, the blues, the darker blues, it might look like water in a pool. So that could be really cool too. However you want to go about it, it's up to you. All right, so that's it for today's lesson. Hope you had a good time. Uh, making your expressive shadow drawing, whether it's in a cool batch of colors or some nice warm colors. Looking forward to seeing these in our next Zoom session. All these nice cool colors make me want to go jump in a pool. So I think I'm going to go jump in the pool right now. We don't have a pool, so I guess I got to get to work. I'll see you guys later. Sounds even hotter than just not going in the pool. Oh well, at least we have a hose. See you later. Bye.